Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Since this is going to be the year of rabbit, in today's video I would like to share with you how to create a painting of a bunny. This is the general order, even though painting a rabbit in the background do kind of happen at the same time. And feel free to jump to the parts that you would like to watch. And here is a list of materials I used for the painting. And you don't have to stick to what I use and feel free to experiment. Let's start with drawing. When doing drawing, start by lightly blocking out the big shapes. Make sure you have enough space for the entire rabbit on the paper and it is in the right position on the paper. Then proceed to draw the details of the rabbit. Make sure the lines are not too dark. Use a kneaded eraser to lighten the pencil lines, especially where it is supposed to be painted in light colors. There's no need to draw the leaves clearly. We will further simplify the background. I will only draw out some branches and leaves here. Make sure the branches are going into slightly different directions so they look better in terms of composition. I'm going to preserve the white in the eye and the whiskers with masking fluid. To be honest, this masking fluid pen is a little bit too thick for the whiskers, so I try my best to lightly brush the tip over the paper to make the lines as thin as possible. I'm also using this white wax pastel to create some texture on the fur. Wax leaves water resistant marks, but not as harsh as the ones left by masking fluid, so it will be quite subtle. So the drawing is considered done. Now I'm thoroughly wetting both sides of the paper. This allows the paper to stay damp for a very long time. This is ideal for painting fluffy animals.
The paper is very wet right now. So while waiting for the paper to absorb the water a little bit more, I am pre-mixing some colors needed for the painting. For the fur of the rabbit, I will use different shades of earth colors. Because the paper is very wet, it is important to make the mixtures thick enough or it will be too light when laid on paper. I'm not trying to copy the colors in the reference photo. As long as the tonal values are correct, it will be just fine. I'm using paper towel to remove the excess water around the rabbit. In this way, the paper is still very wet where the rabbit is drawn, so that it will create the effect of fluffiness when paints are laid down. But it won't overflow everywhere out of control. I'm using cobalt blue to test the wetness of the paper. I need to mix it to the right consistency so that it won't be too light or too dark. And cobalt blue is used to paint the fur on the stomach. Cobalt blue is good for painting white in shades. First, paint the lightest shades in the fur. Let the colors mix on paper so that it looks more natural. for painting the fur is from light to dark and while the paper is wet you can always go in with a darker shade pink parts of the ear, use some rose matter genuine.
Painting the fur requires some patience. Since all the colors used are non-staining colors, it is very easy to remove paints in unwanted areas. The back of the rabbit is light against the background. So I'm going to re-wet the paper in the background area so that when I lay down paint for the background, we'll create the fluffy effect for the white parts of the fur. But before doing the background, I want to strengthen some areas on the rabbit. I am using a Chinese calligraphy brush um, and I realized that it's very good for painting details of fur because once it's split and flattened, it can stay in that way and then it creates um, very thin lines, like multiple thin lines. 
To make the colors harmonious, I'm still using cobalt blue for the mixture of green, but I will use aureolin yellow to make it brighter. To make darker shades of green, add more cobalt blue. Or add some red to make it duller. The leaves in the background do not need to be painted clearly, or it will compete for attention. Just some suggestions of leaves and stems are enough. Try to make the brush strokes free and variant. Here I'm using a clean damp brush to rescue some white areas on the back of the rabbit. the leaves in the foreground that meaning that's closer to us um, the green mixture is brighter meaning I used more aureole in yellow
paper is still damp but not too wet, you can use your fingernails or palette knife to create some texture. I realized the background is a little bit too light, especially right near the body of the rabbit. So I'm going in with some dark color while the paper is still damp so that the body of the rabbit can pop out visually. Also adding some more texture to the background. paper gradually starts to dry, you can see certain areas need reinforcement of colors or textures. As long as the paper is still damp, you can always add dark colors, darker colors. Just make sure the consistency is thicker so that you won't create blooms by introducing too much water. Now I'm painting the lighter shades of the eye. You can always use a clean damp brush to remove overflown paints. I'm just picking up some leftover dark colors on my palette to darken certain areas in the eye. Dry. So first, remove the masking fluid in the eye area. Masking fluid leave a hard edge, which can be quite unnatural. So it is important to remove it as early as possible so you can fine tune it. I'm using a clean damp brush to soften the edges of the white area. I'm picking up some dirty grayish color on my palette to add details to the eye so that it is more 3D.
Because the paper is completely dry, so I decided to tape it down to make it easier when I adjust the background. This is quite unorthodox. It is possible since I have a lot of white paper around the image. There is more flexibility in watercolor painting than you might think. And now I'm adjusting the background in front of the rabbit because the light chest of the rabbit is not popping out since the background is even lighter. Also, I want to introduce some red colors to the background. So first, I'm wetting the paper with clean water. Make sure to go beyond the background into the body of the rabbit when wetting the paper so that there won't be a harsh line between the background and the rabbit. I'm making a mixture of dull green, still using cobalt blue and aureolian yellow, but adding a bit to raw sienna. The mixture of this green needs to be lighter than the green grass painted earlier so that those plants can still pop out. Splatter some paint to create more texture. You need to have a lot of watery paint in the brush to splatter. I am making the background right against the white fur a bit darker, so the white fur can be more prominent. I am making a darker mixture using cobalt blue, rose matter genuine, and raw sienna to splatter onto the background. You can immediately wipe off paints that fall on undesired areas. 
but it is safer to cover the area you don't want to spell letters with a piece of paper or kitchen towel. I'm making a light pink color with aureoling and rose matter genuine to splatter into the background. I think some red colors are needed to make the background more interesting or the painting is a bit too cold. I want some fuzzy flowers in the white area. So I am spraying some water onto the white area and tilting my board to encourage its flow. Now I'm splattering rose matter genuine onto the wet paper. non-staining colors is that you can always remove it. some aureole in yellow to make them look like um, distant flowers. and this is the final result thank you for watching don't forget to click like and subscribe